So the, um, what, I, what I like to do is come up with a couple of different options on builds. So typically I'll focus in on a case and that case will be common across all the builds. I typically focus in on a power supply and keep that common across the different configurations. But then, you know, I'll come up with some stuff where it's a little bit cheaper processor, a little bit cheaper RAM and a more uh, expensive video card or the other way around, a more, you know, a high end processor, you know, high end RAM and a cheaper video card. And then you just spell out, you know, the, the advantages and disadvantages of both, right? Cause you know, if you buy, you know, a $200 video card and in two years you want to upgrade that video card to a $400 video card, the price you pay for performance is probably going to be pretty dang good, right? You're going to get a lot of return on value for replacing a card. Or if you want to add a card into Crossfire, you can usually get a used card really cheap. And then if they die, then man, then you just go buy a new card. Whereas your CPU, your RAM, you know, that's stuff that's used even if you're not doing graphics intensive things. So I like to give, you know, the two options. One will be the faster video card with, you know, the, a little bit lower speed system. Uh, and then the other side of it, you have, you know, the, the faster CPU with more cores and more RAM and, you know, a little bit cheaper uh, video card. And just, you know, tell somebody like, hey, if you start doing X, Y, Z with this video card, you might need to go get a different one or you might need to get a second one. Uh, or if you start doing X, Y, Z with this processor, you might need to go get a different one. And that's, for most people, that's something they, you know, it's easy to add in a second video card. You know, swapping a CPU, a lot of people don't do, uh, you know, take off your CPU cooler, basically gut your case in most instances, especially if you pick a case without a, uh, a CPU cutout, you have to take the motherboard out of the case to replace, you know, the CPU cooler sometimes. So keep that in mind when you're making a, you know, decisions for people. Typically I like to skew more toward the higher end processors and you know, just have a good experience for a long time until you decide to replace the motherboard, the processor and the RAM all together. That's how I do it at home. That's how I think most people should do it. And then you just keep everything else. So you can keep that video card or you, know, you can upgrade that video card or you can get a second one in Crossfire. Um, a month ago, I wouldn't have recommended anything in Crossfire. They were kind of ridiculous. The frame pacing was really bad. Uh, the two latest beta drivers from AMD are, are very good. Uh, if you guys don't know what this problem is, it's actually where the NVIDIA driver was introducing runt frames and Fraps would see that as a full frame. So when it was counting the frames across the screen, so basically your refreshes on a screen, you would get these little runt frames that it would count in its, uh, in its calculations. So it made the AMDs and Crossfire look ridiculously good. But then when you start looking for micro stutter using some of the new capturing techniques that they're using to analyze video, you start seeing that the micro stutters are ridiculously high and you'll actually, the frame rate doesn't matter at that point. Once you introduce those micro stutters, you will not like what video looks like oh, yeah. because you will actually see stepping in the video. So yeah, it's really bad and AMD is doing a great job. AMD Roy, if you guys want to follow somebody at AMD underscore Roy on Twitter, uh, he's VP of North America, he's a good guy. Uh, great information out of him. So follow him, I'll put that down in the description. Uh, Jason Sun does have a little uh, YouTube channel and you know, if you guys want to go check that out in one of these videos, if his son's okay with that, I'll, I'll put that down in the comments as well. And you know, be nice. Seven, nice, be nice. You guys are nice to me for the most part, so I'd imagine a little kid you can be nice to. <laughs> um, and that's about it. You know, I'll just come back with, you know, a few options typed up. Uh, you know, typically for motherboards and stuff, I won't be very specific. I'll just, you know, basically list the cost of things. Um, and the way I do it, guys, is, so first I start by making a wish list on Amazon because you can just go through Amazon and be like, yep, that part, yep, that part, yep, that part, yep, that part. And you can see a quick, concise, medium price, right? Because they're not usually the cheapest, they're not usually the most expensive, but they have a great return policy and I get free shipping because I'm prime. So that does, you know, you gotta factor that into the cost. And tax, you have to factor that in as well. So what I usually do then is I take that list and I put it in Price Grabber and just make sure 
that, you know, something may be $5 cheaper on Newegg, but I might get free shipping with Amazon. Or I might have to pay tax with Amazon because of where it's getting shipped out of, which is ridiculous, but that's still how it works. So it may be cheaper, you know, on Newegg, but you may pay, you know, more tax, you may pay shipping. The return policies may not be as good. And trust me, when you're building a system for somebody else, if you have to return parts, you're not gonna be happy because it's gonna make it take longer, the people are gonna get grumpy with you and it's just extra work for you that you really don't wanna deal with. You buy it from Amazon, you're a Prime member, free return shipping up to 30 days on defective parts. So keep that in mind. The other thing, don't register any of the components for the person when you build the PC. I always make a little uh, packet with all of the documentation and on the top, all of the registration cards and copies of the receipts so that the person that you're giving it to can send in the registration cards and then the warranties in their name. And why I bring this up is because if something happens to his computer and I'm the warranty owner on all the parts, guess who has to send back the part? That's right, this guy. Uh, I learned that the hard way a few years ago where I had to replace a motherboard for my uncle when he could have just mailed it back himself and I had to drive like 30 miles to go get it. So just think about that kind of stuff. You know, you're helping somebody out, but they're also a customer. Um, you know, not a lot of people do this professionally anymore. Uh, it's kind of a dying art. So typically a lot of people have, you know, friends, neighbors, relatives do it for them. And just, you know, it's a good, it's a good example of how I actually got my job. So I don't, most of you don't know, most of you do, because sometimes other channels let it slip. Um, I do have a day job for a major software company and that's how I actually got that job was when I was 14 to 18 in high school, my I was lucky enough that my parents bought me a 486 computer and I bet I tore down and rebuilt it a hundred times in four years. You know, I was always dinking with stuff. We were always putting different OS's on it, you know, like NT4, NT351, DOS, Windows, OS, or OS, uh, oh, see how long it's been, uh, OS2. Yeah. <laughs> I had to think about that one for a second, um, which is the old IBM OS, if you guys don't know. And, you know, just, just don't be afraid, you know, like, I'm sure you'll let your sons know. My parents were very good about this, which is, and I'm going to take this, this tact with my kids when they get to this age is, if you break it, I won't be mad. We may not replace it immediately, <laughs> yeah. but I won't be mad. Because you were trying to learn, as long as you weren't being careless, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think every kid now should learn how to program, and every kid should learn how to build a PC. You know, this is the the age that we're in, and these are skills like reading and writing that people should just have as a basic education anymore. So, all you school administrators out there, um, you know, shame on you for not, you know. Let's get rid of like some home ec classes and teach people how to build PCs instead because I'm sure it's all going to get them a job. Whereas baking, maybe, but you can usually figure out baking from your mother or grandmother or father. So, which I guess now you can figure out building PCs from your mother, father, or grandmother. But so where we take it from here is uh, I'll just build out that list. I'll send it to him. I'll do um, a build log of all of this, especially when I'm. I might vlog it. We'll see how you know you guys like these videos or not. Um, but I'll definitely do um, cut this video up a little bit and add in you know what I'm thinking about what parts I'm picking. And at the end, um, we'll do a build guide with unboxing of all the parts and just kind of show you guys you know from start. The, the concept here is to show everybody from start to end how you build a PC. It's not just like go pick some random parts you know, throw it together and hope that it works, right? There's, you do need to spend more time in the front end thinking about price and performance and, you know, logistics than you ever do building a PC. Because if I'm cranking along and building a lot of PCs, I can put together a PC in under half an hour. Not OS install, but, you know, I can assemble a computer really fast because you just get used to it. You get used to what things you have to do in what order. And that's not a big deal, but I might take three days to spec out a computer because I really want to make sure that I'm getting, you know, the right price and the right performance for somebody, you know, if it's for myself, eh, 
I'm probably not as picky, but I, I really want to make sure that somebody I'm doing work for is impressed with my work and we'll let other people know that, you know, it's a hobby and I like doing it and, you know, we go from there. It's how you get more experience. The more computers you build for people, the better, more experience you get. Um, I will say, guys, if you're new to this, if you're, you know, in school still, there's a, a, a course called A+. Uh, it's just a book you can go pick up. Usually you can get them at secondhand bookstores anymore. Um, just get a, cur a mostly current one and read through it. It'll, you know, it'll show you all the different uh, components and what all the acronyms are so that, you know, you can talk to somebody and know what you're talking about. You know, like how many people say PCI and don't know what it stands for, or, you know, what's a socket, you know, 1150, who, you know, how does it work? Where are the pins, right? You know, you got to learn this stuff. So sure, you can assemble a computer, but you also want to be able to, you know, technically talk about a computer. That's also how you're going to get a job someday. I guarantee you, if you know how to build computers, you know how to install OSs, and you actually know it, you can talk about it and regurgitate that information to somebody else, you will get a job in the computer industry. So guys, I think we're, we're done with this series of videos. Um, the build videos will be coming. I wanna say thank you to Jason for uh, allowing me to do this build for him. Uh, you know, obviously it's my time, but it's his money, so <laughs> yeah. I wanna make sure I do you know, good work. Um, I want to make sure it's something his family will enjoy for year to, years to come. And this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. We'll see you next time.